what makes ordinary people appear extraordinary? I'm sure we've all wondered about this at some point. Why do some people shine out more than others? Is it based on what they do or is it based on their values and what they stand for? And why is it that media in general can't seem to get enough of certain individuals? The answer perhaps lies in the concept of personal branding. To discuss, I have with me author of the bestseller, Branding and Marketing You, Donna Rachelson. Welcome to Leading Opinion. Great to have you on the show, Donna. Thank you so much. Now, I, re I read this amazing book that you wrote. I was totally riveted by it, simply because it's not based on some ad hoc research that you did, based on theories, research, sitting in a library and consulting books, etc. But it was very hands-on, a very practical approach, kind of like an investigative research approach, if I may call it so, where you went out and you interviewed some high-profile people, got behind their personal branding story. What set you on this path and um, how did you select the participants? Okay, so I'm very pleased that it came across that way to you because when I went on this journey to explore the subject of personal branding, mm -hmm. what I discovered is the focus was on the really big brands, the Oprahs, the Mandelas, the Bill Gates, all these kind of people. And when I started to examine the subject, what I realized is we are all branded. Whether you like it or not, you have a brand. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I say to people is your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So I wanted to create a book that people could relate to. So I explored my network. I identified some people who I really admired in the context of the kind of brand that they built. And there were other people who I didn't have a relationship with, but I was intrigued about their story and their personal branding journey. And I approached them and they agreed to be in the book. As I am intrigued with this book that you've produced. <laughs> uh, you actually brought me to the next question because what I was going to ask you is, do you have to be a very high profile person or do you recommend that anybody, regardless of the position you hold in your job or in life, should really take personal branding seriously and to what degree and how do we begin this journey? So I believe whether you are in the corporate world or whether you are an entrepreneur, personal branding is critical to your career and your business success. The reason being, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're going out trying to build your business, you need to be able to brand and market yourself. Mm -hmm. If you are in the corporate world, what I say is that before anybody buys your company, before they buy your products or services, they buy your people first. And if your people know how to brand and market themselves, they're essentially helping to brand and market your organization. Mm -hmm. And just to demystify that a bit as well, when I read this book, the, the people that, that, you, that you actually interviewed are quite high profile. But if you look at their branding story, it really came down to the basics like mm -hmm. integrity, authenticity, mm -hmm. and business ethics at the end of the day. So what I say to people is that personal branding is not about trying to be somebody you're not. It is rooted in authenticity and it's about taking your best skills, your best qualities and your best characteristics and packaging it in a way that people can understand the value that you deliver. So in other words, your product and what you do and offer as an entrepreneur has to be congruent with who you are as a person as well. Because often we focus on what we do as opposed to who we are. And when we start to look at the concept of personal branding, it's the clear idea that comes to people's mind when they think of you. It's what you stand for. Mm -hmm. It's the values, abilities that other people associate with you. Mm -hmm. And in a way, as you mentioned earlier, we're all brands. I mean, especially if you have to think about how we interact and connect with each other on social media, we are brands. You know, some people become thought leaders uh, on social media as well. And I find it difficult not to bring me into the equation in what I do. Correct. And, you know, often I, I talk about this concept of positioning. How do you position yourself in people's minds? Now, if you think about it with the positioning, there's going to be lots of different elements that come together. So, for example, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a branding and marketing specialist. I have a soft spot for woman development. Plus, I'm very focused on health and vitality. Those are all the different elements 
that make up my brand. And it's how I bring it all together and how I package it that is going to have impact in the, in the context of how I'm perceived. Mm -hmm. But I think some people have missed that, that part of it. Mm -hmm. Again, if you go on social media, a lot of companies are taking advantage of the growth in the use of social media, but you still find very superficial mm -hmm. uh, posts on Facebook or Twitter for that example. It's just about getting your product out there and you know very little about the person or the entity itself. And, you know, often what I say to people is don't go on social media until you have a robust understanding of what your personal brand is, what it is you want to stand for, mm -hmm. and what is the legacy that you want to leave. Because once you understand that, it's easy to go out on social media in a way that adds value mm -hmm. to other people's lives. Um, and often when I talk about marketing yourself, it's all about adding value. Yeah. What is the value you're adding? What is the difference you're making? What are the perspectives that you're putting out there that position you as a thought leader, that position you as the go-to brand? I don't think there's anything as narcissistic as this may sound, as anything is more exciting than really getting into you, getting mm -hmm. to know who you are. And that I'm assuming that is the process you go through when mm -hmm. you think about branding yourself, mm -hmm. marketing yourself, getting to know who you are really authentically. In fact, I say that there are two key things, that, in fact three things that need to be in place before you build and develop your personal brand. The first is that you have a strong sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Really dig down deep, what is it that drives you, what is it that makes you happy, what is it that builds on your best strengths. So firstly to have a strong sense of purpose. The second is to have a very high level of passion for the work that you do. If you're not passionate about the work that you do, um, it's going to be very difficult to build a personal brand. And the other element that has to be in place is that you deliver amazing work. Personal branding is not about delivering great work. Mm -hmm. That needs to be in place yeah. before you even think of building a strong personal brand. I find that very interesting. It comes across as if almost as if it's kind of like a personal development process mm -hmm. that forces you to look at your life. Mm -hmm. So if you ask yourself the right question and you find yourself in, an, in a job that you, that's unsatisfying, mm -hmm. it, knowing who you are and developing a brand can actually push you towards living a purposeful life is, is how I see it, which is exactly the exercise I did when I was reading your book. Mm -hmm. And funny you should say that is often when I work one on one with people, Part of what I do is bring that purpose and passion into what they do. Mm -hmm. Even if it's an element of their work, um, being involved in an NGO, for example, and putting that at the center of their activities, bringing it into the workplace, it, it creates a purpose and a passion for what they do mm -hmm. and actually creates a new level of energy for the work that they do. Okay. When we look at authenticity around the whole personal branding uh, exercise, would you say that reputation is a cornerstone to that process as well? One should also think about one's reputation when developing your, your, your values that you're going to attach to your brand. So for me, reputation builds over time. And what I say to people is what you, once you understand what you want to be known for, you need to stick to it. It's no good trying to be all different kinds of things to all different kinds of people, going out on different platforms with different messages. A cornerstone to great personal branding is consistency. Mm -hmm. And what I say to people is that consistency is far more impactful than moments of greatness. That's a very powerful statement. <laughs> I love it. Um, consistency is far more impactful than moments of greatness. Mm -hmm. So if you want to build a reputation, then go out consistently in the context of what you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. And what I say to people, reputations are very fragile. Mm -hmm. And you need to look after them like your life depends on it. I really like the way you put it across because what you're saying to me indirectly is you're saying look at the quality of the life that you want to live mm -hmm. and that is how you brand yourself. It's mm -hmm. really getting down to quality of life. Correct, correct. More than just living in the moment. Correct and that's why for me this personal brand, I always say to people um, personal branding is not for sissies because it requires a deep level of introspection. Mm -hmm. It requires you to really say, what am I strong at? Because if you want to build a personal brand, you have to build on your strengths. Sure. Don't try and focus on your weaknesses because no great brand was built on weakness. And that's very difficult for people to come to terms with. 
um, and it requires the sense of, you know, what is the difference that I want to make in the world? What is the value that I want to deliver? What is the difference that I want to make? And it immediately shifts you into a position of leadership because Correct. you have to start taking responsibility. And we know how hard that can be for some people as well, taking risk for all of us mm -hmm. to take responsibility in different areas of our life, to really be congruent with who we are and what we stand for in this world. In fact, you know, when I, when I take people through a process of looking at their personal brand, we develop what we call a personal leadership brand statement. Mm -hmm. And that is to a person what a brand positioning statement is to a company. And it really becomes your guiding mantra of what it is that is going to guide everything that you do from a personal branding perspective. Well, it certainly is a great way of developing leaders in this country. Thank you so much. It was a big pleasure, very insightful discussion. Thank you, Donna. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.